we will be discussing the Kohler 78913 thermostatic valve cartridge. This cartridge can be identified by one of many ways. First, uh, it only balances the temperature in your shower. So when you turn it, it's going to go to hot and cold. To turn your shower heads on, you're going to have separate valve handles. Uh, you do want to make sure you correctly identify this cartridge. This is an insanely expensive cartridge. It currently lists at about $413. You'll probably be paying in the neighborhood of $200, but definitely shop around. To identify this cartridge, you really need to take it out. Why would you want to take it out? Some of the problems you might have is it might be giving you only hot water, or it might giving, be giving you only cold water. So to get the unit out, you do need to take the cowling off around. Um, and your cowling might say cold on it, so that may be a first indicator. But uh, in this particular case, when we're showing you, the valve is made in Italy. So once you take the cowling off, you can take uh, the center off. In this particular unit that I have here, it's a screw-on on some units. Uh, it might be a push. You can see the valve has this distinct collar, but don't be fooled. There's a couple of them that look just like that. This valve is, uh, if you look online, there's some, uh, it's notorious for uh, stripping if it's in there too tight and you can't get it out. To take it out, uh, there's a couple things. You should have a socket that's uh, the correct size, preferably a six-sided socket, not a 12, so it's got a firm grip on all surfaces. When you turn it, you want to use more than just the nut. So the nut at the end actually doesn't spin off. It turns the whole unit out. So you'll see here that I use a wrench and a pair of uh, channel locks. Now before you get to this part, you make sure the water's off. There are two little uh, screws right here. Uh, if they've been in there a long time, the seats might be worn out, so even if you turn them in, the water might still be on. If you have any doubts, turn the house water off. You want to try to even out the pressure when you take the valve assembly out. You may have to put the channel locks on the opposite side of the wrench, or if you have a T-handle socket, uh, that might be beneficial. How much pressure can you use? Well, plumbing is notorious for not being attached very well to the house. It might just be free-floating in there, so be conservative and firm, but not aggressive. Once you take the valve out, you want to look inside and inspect that there's no issues. You should see the multiple uh, rings inside, and those surfaces should be smooth. The water comes in through two different compartments. On this one, the cold is on the right, and you can see the light coming through from the valve. The valve on the left comes through the second section, and you'll see that corresponds to the different sections on the valve. So there's no debris in any of the chambers. It looks like it's clear. Uh, at this point, we actually took those little screws out, we replaced our seats because the seats were bad, and we went on with, the re with reinserting and putting everything back in. Put some lubricant on the O-rings, screw it in by hand, and then tighten it up. In this particular shower, you were getting only hot water. You couldn't make it very cold. So when we took the valve out, we, the first thing we saw is that it was all clogged and that the screens were missing. So we don't think we're the first person to take it out. The screens look stainless steel. I don't think they rusted away. But you can see that the valve is all full of debris. We cleaned all the debris out. We uh, pushed the springs back and forth inside. We think we had it pretty clean. We put it back in, but it did not fix the problem. So we ended up buying a new one to fix the problem. If you do order a new one, make sure to triple check that you've picked the, this particular part with this part number. The search engines love to return lots of things that are similar. Don't be uh, fall for a decoy that's similar in price, but actually not the same valve. As I said, there's some out there that look very, very similar. Uh, make sure you pay attention to these distinct features and order the proper one. So now let's look at the components of this valve and see if it's actually serviceable. The first thing I did is I actually took this valve and I tried to take it apart. I didn't actually know where it came apart at the time, so in the end state I cut it. And you can see there's tons of parts in this thing. To try to open it, I put a, a bicycle nut on the bottom in a vise, and I ended up uh, trying to screw the thing apart, again not knowing where it was going to separate. Uh, looking at it now, we could heat it up and possibly try it again, right? But uh, ultimately, I took a, a, uh, an impact hammer to this, and it did not take it apart. So let's look at the components of this. So we can see, like every valve, it has a valve stem on the right. Inside the valve stem was a spring with a cap on it, and the, that cap went into a center post. And the center post went through what looks to be the mixer with another spring on the side and then the mixing chamber. Uh, lots of little components in between. You can also see that there's a lot of a lot of O-rings inside of this thing, and uh, the three O-rings on the outside are all different sizes. So, just to service those, you'd have to go about finding the three different sizes that you need. So, what went wrong with this thing? Uh, one thing that's unusual, um, I think that there's a piece missing on this. And if you look at the center shaft, there's uh, the end that goes into the handle. 
I looks to me like maybe a piece of rubber or something went on that. I don't know why they would have machined that that way. It's way back in the mixing chamber. I don't think it would have brought any benefit to uh, to the mixing operation. How does the mixing mixing actually work? If you actually look at the large ring with the holes in it that sits in the middle of the chamber, that is covering the cold and the hot. It doesn't look like it. Uh, necessarily fully shuts them off. It does have a gasket that runs around it, so the water is intended not to run around the outside. It's intended to run into the inside. Now, the center shaft goes into the handle. What appears to happen is when you turn the handle in, it compresses the spring of the handle, puts pressure on the center pin, which pushes the mixing, uh, the, the mixing ring to cover the hot more than the cold, restricting the hot and allowing more just the cold in and vice versa, if you release the valve, the spring that's on the back side puts pressure again on the mixing ring in the center and it's supposed to float over and cover more of the cold. So one theory would be that that thing wasn't floating right. So let's say there was a piece of rubber over this end of the center shaft and it made it just a little bit longer. When you turn the knob all the way in, it would actually push the mixing valve further over the hot, reducing the hot. If there's a piece missing and the, and the center shaft is now too short, you can't fully cover the hot. Being the hot chamber is the furthest one in in the valve. There is another possibility, which is simply that that last outer uh, O-ring was no good and it was allowing the hot water into the main chamber without going through the valve. You know, keep in mind, this valve is always on. It never turns off. It's just mixing. So when the spigot turns on, it just allows flow through, and that's all it does. Now, another theory uh, I did check, and I didn't see any real difference, is um, those springs kind of look like what you see in a thermostat in a car. I did put them in some boiling water, and they didn't change size. So I don't think they're thermal springs. Now, getting this thing apart... Uh, you can see that it has a cast main body that the valve handle goes in. And then there was the threaded area. And in this particular one, it looked like it either had some Loctite of some type or some calcium buildup. But ultimately, if you're going to try to get it apart, uh, you'd be heating the mixing chamber on the bottom. It's probably going to ruin those uh, O-rings in there, but these were pretty crispy, which again is probably part of the problem. Um, and you might damage them. Now, if that O-ring that was around the mixing uh, ring that was floating in and out was, had it swelled and it was old and crispy, it could just be that ring is jammed and, and it, there wasn't enough pressure from the springs to move the ring back and forth anymore. Now, when we had it apart, you can push in the bottom and, and see that it does move some. Um, but again, this all has to work within the context of the valve. That's what it looks like inside. It, the hard part's going to be getting apart and then finding all of those rings in the right size. But at $200, if you can fix the thing, great. Now, the, as I said, the screens were missing off this one. I have no idea why they were missing. The valve, um, the nut had some damage on it, so it's possible that uh, somebody had previously taken it apart. Hopefully this helped you. Uh, be very careful doing it. Make sure you turn the water off, and good luck.